Hi everyone. So this is my um, final art of the week for this term uh, before we start the summer holidays. And um, if you if you're looking at it, um, what what is it? What what has created this work? Um, so giving you a clue, it's actually called as a as a piece. It's called Bicycle Wheel. And it was made in 1951, and this is actually a copy of the lost original, which was lost in, which was made in 1913, but um, it uh, got mislaid and and lost, and so it was created again in 1951. It's by um, an artist who was very um, forward-thinking at the time and would use what is called, what are called found objects to create um, his artwork. So he didn't actually make anything himself as such, but he found different objects and put them together or or try to attach them to one, one another, like in, in this one, where he's got a, obviously a bicycle wheel into um, a stool. So this was very, very um, new uh, when he was making this art and obviously lots of people sort of laughed at it or um, thought that he was he was a little bit strange. Um, but obviously it was quite a moment in the art world where things shifted from painting um, and drawing to thinking about using found objects. So I'll read you the story. So the artist's name is Marcel Duchamp um, and this story is called Spinning a Story. Paris was full of bicycles. They bumped over cobblestones, leaned against walls yet nobody seemed to realise what a beautiful thing a bicycle wheel is. A perfect circle. A flower of fine, taut metal spokes. Marcel Duchamp found a wheel from a broken bicycle. He took it to his studio. He turned it upside down. He slotted the end of the metal fork holding the wheel through a hole in the seat of a wooden stool. He sat in his armchair and looked at it. It was perfect. There was nothing he wanted to add. Nothing he wanted to take away. The wheel had been made in a factory with thousands of others. But when he looked at it like this, in a new light, well, he thought, if I call this a work of art, who can prove I'm wrong? That was in 1913. When war broke out the following year, Duchamp tried to join the French army. But the army doctors said, you're no good. You've got a weak heart. He couldn't just hang around, though. While his friends fought and died, he boarded a steamship bound for New York. And here he was, sitting on a snow-covered bench in Central Park, reading a letter from his sister Suzanne. The war in Europe was still raging. The American newspapers said that President Wilson was going to arrange a peace conference. If only. If only the war would end. Duchamp worried about his family. Suzanne was working as a nurse in Paris. His brother Raymond was in the army. Suzanne wrote that, that she'd finished clearing out his old studio. Why hadn't she kept the studio for herself? Like her three brothers, Suzanne was an artist. Surely she could have asked her their father for help with the studio rent. Duchamp wanted to know what she'd done with his bicycle wheel. Could she have thrown it away? He must reply immediately. Not so long ago, Duchamp was a painter the kind of modern painter who tries out new ideas like Cubism. He was interested in the way Braque and Picasso combined countless different moments looking in their pictures. He was fasc fascinated by Edward Murbridge, photographs of horses galloping and men and women running, dancing, jumping. In 1912, Duchamp painted a picture of a woman stunned walking downstairs that looked a bit like Mo Murbridge's photographs and a bit like a cubist painting. That painting and three others were selected for an exhibition in New York. Shocking! Nonsense! What charming things the American critics said about his paintings. No one was more surprised than Duchamp here himself to hear that all four had sold. So when he stepped off the steamship in New York Harbour, Duchamp was already something of a celebrity. People wanted to meet the eccentric French artist. I don't care if they think my ideas are odd, Duchamp shrugged. I am most definitely not their idea of an artist. To most people, it seemed, an artist was someone who arranged colours, 
lines and shapes to make a nice picture. But surely a work of art should be something more than, than please the eye. Duchamp decided that really essential thing about being an artist was having interesting ideas that make people th see things differently. Sometimes, at a fashionable party, a guest would come up to Duchamp and say, I was bowled over by your paintings. Thank you, he would reply. Perhaps you can help me. I've been wondering, what is it that makes a painting different from a bicycle wheel? He often got the same answer. A painting is unique. It's painted by an artist, and no other painting is exactly the same. A bicycle wheel is produced by machines in a factory. It's identical to all the other wheels. I am the artist, not you, thought Duchamp. I am the one who decides what is art. When you think about it, oil paint comes out of a paint factory in tubes. Artists squeeze paint out of the tubes and spread it around on canvas or paper with a brush and say, this is a work of art. Instead of buying paint in a special shop for artists, Duchamp might decide to buy something else in an ordinary shop. For example, he could go to a hardware store and buy, let me see, scrape, scratch, scrape. A workman was shoveling snow off the path right beside the bench where Duchamp was sitting. A snow shovel? Yes, and when I call that shovel art, people will see it as they've never seen it before. He pictured Suzanne in his armchair, gazing at his bicycle wheel, as if she were right there in front of him, even though she was, far, she was on the far side of the Atlantic. The thought made him feel hopeful. For a moment, he forgot about the war. Okay, so that is my um, first art of the week. Um, and perhaps you could um, think about making um, a, an artwork out of found objects, things that you have in your house, um, and you could put them together. Um, and perhaps you could get um, other members of your family to help you uh, put to put something together to create uh, a installation a bit like Duchamp's. So that's my first one. My next one, um, and in fact, we've got a bit of a theme of metal in in these um, arts uh, of the week this this time. Um, this is a called a portrait of a man. It was made in 1928 by a an artist. His name is Alexander Calder, and Alexander Calder often carried a roll of wire over his shoulder and a pair of pliers in his pocket. And he once commented, I think best in wire. Calder made different kinds of sculptures out of wire. He made mobiles, movable sculptures, portraits, and even, miniature, even a miniature circus. He particularly enjoyed working with wire because it allowed him to create drawings in space. So um, he, he was a very famous um, artist, uh, Alexander Calder, and he made, he made a v beautiful um, miniature circus out, purely out of wire. Um, with things hanging. He makes lots of mobiles and very, very big um, mobiles that actually fill a whole room in, a, in a, a gallery, in a gallery space. So very, very large with big sheets of metal. Um, and what's nice is that when, when you're in the room with the um, mobile it moving, then obviously diff as people move around the room, then um, there are lots of different waves of movement which cause the mobile to move. So they they are quite lovely, and and you'll know that when you've you know when you've seen a mobile yourself, how nice it is to see the way it moves with the air around it. Um, so what I thought you could do is, and hopefully you might be able to get a hold of some wire, or there might be some wire in your house, um, and you could try to shape the wire into a face or a figure. Um, just to say that if you don't have wire. The other thing I thought you could do is that you could actually get a string and although you won't be able to um, hang it up because obviously it's not going to be stiff enough, um, what you could do is that you could put it on a, on a piece of paper, you could stick it down. So you could actually sort of do the same sort of technique but obviously on a sort of 2D with a 2D feel to it. Um, but if you are a, if you're lucky enough to get some, some wire or just sort of plastic coated craft wire would be great and a pair of scissors um, what you need to do is to think about so if you're thinking about your your face um, or, or a figure um, things like a moustache you could create a bow tie 
Uh, has the person got straight or curly hair? Because if it's got curly hair, then obviously you can um, coil the wire. Is, is he wearing a hat or is she wearing a hat? Has it got long or short hair? So start by playing with the wire. What sort of shapes and lines can you make? Um, try twisting, hooking and knotting it to combine pieces. Um, use a long piece of wire to bend into, an, into the outline of the face. Uh, make separate shapes for eyes, nose, mouth and attach them using smaller pieces of wire. So, I mean, you could try and make a, uh, a face with a single piece of wire. See if you can do that. Um, then keep going. Add more wire to create a body. Think about, what about a zigzag hair, a zigzag collar, a zigzag mouth. Um, can you make a portrait of someone you know? Would they be able to recognise it? So um, that could be a little project for you. So if, if and when you can get hold of some wire, Perhaps have a go at trying to make um, a face, or if 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 not, then can you make shapes with the wire? Um, can you create a mobile that you could hang uh, in your room? So um, that is that is my uh, art of the week for this week. Um, I hope that you um, have enjoyed them, and I very much in, enjoyed making the art of the week throughout um, this time. I hope that you all have a lovely summer holiday and that you have a nice rest and that you're able to um, go outside and um, enjoy. Hopefully if we have some nice weather that would be great. Um, we have also got a project, a uh, summer project, some at homework project, um, which uh, is going to go on the school website. Um, and it's to draw or think of a, a view from your window or from your house. Uh, then you're you're going to create um, maybe a picture or a photograph. Um, so have a look at the website and check uh, to see what, what you can do with the summer homework. And I very much look forward to seeing you all back in school in September. So um, in the meantime, take care, look after yourselves and your family and um, I'll see you back in school soon. Okay, bye.